So today we're going to talk about deep foundations. We're going to we're going to divide our, our presentation into into three pieces. Uh, first of all, a general discussion about uh, uses of deep foundations, uh, working with geotechnical engineers, who of course we need to collaborate with, uh, and some about the mechanics of deep foundations. In part two, uh, we'll talk about about uh, different types of deep foundations. Uh, their uh, their positive and negative attributes, uh, and uh, and then we'll go into a discussion about the Chapter 18 requirements in the IBC, uh, mostly focused on the seismic requirements. I'll also discuss uh, pile load testing. <clears throat> in uh, in part three, then uh, I'll go through a design example of a a uh, concrete pile foundation uh, for a parking garage. Uh, we'll first of all go through the the pile design itself, uh, and after that, we'll have a discussion about three different approaches for designing the gray beam at the base of the moment frames. So why do we use deep foundations? In, in the most general sense, uh, we use them to, to transfer building loads uh, to deeper soils, uh, competent soils at depth. Uh, we do this to reduce building settlement, uh, in some cases to provide uh, uplift resistance, uh, and where, for example, we have very heavy loads over a very small area, uh, we may not be able to use spread footings for that. Uh, we can also use deep foundations to address issues of uh, consolidation of, uh, of clay soils or liquefaction uh, in uh, seismic events in sandy soils. So when you're designing deep foundations, you, you really need to be collaborating uh, with the geotechnical engineer. Uh, as, as structural engineers, sometimes we, uh, we, we don't always take the right process. Uh, we, we work at, at arm's length with the geotechnical engineer. Uh, that, that can make our design process a lot less efficient. Usually, in you know, the traditional design process, uh, the geotechnical engineer will determine the need for piles uh, in, in their report. They may uh, ask the structural engineer about what sorts of loads will be expected. And then the geotechnical engineer will provide their report, um, essentially, essentially in a vacuum, saying, OK, here's the vertical capacity, here's the lateral capacity. Um, and then based on that, uh, considering the report as, as basically a, as a Bible, the structural engineer determines the number of piles based upon the, uh, the allowable loads. Uh, and uh, or if it's going to be a design build project, they may indicate, indicate the, the vertical and lateral load requirements on the drawings. Um, the problem here is, is that there is often a range of vertical capacity that might be possible for the site. And, uh, and using the maximum capacity that the geotechnical engineer provides may not necessarily be the most efficient way. Uh, and the resistance to lateral loading is really a lot more complicated than just uh, how much load you can get, uh, how much shear you can get per pile. The vertical loading uh, is, uh, it depends upon the, the length of the pile primarily. Uh, usually we're talking about, uh, about piles that, that gain their their resistance and friction. Uh, and so oftentimes we'll have close to a linear relationship between length and capacity. Um, very seldom uh, are we going to have capacity that's actually limited by the structural capacity of the pile. So, so as a structural engineer, we can work collaboratively with the geotechnical engineer to understand what this capacity is. It may, maybe it's linear or maybe it's, it's, uh, it's not quite linear. It's got some kinks in, in the relationship. Uh, and, uh, and then we can determine what the most efficient uh, design is going to be. We're looking for, ideally, the, low, the lowest cost that will do the job for us. And that is, it's going to come from limiting the total number of piles. Uh, the reason for that is, is that the cost uh, in a pile foundation comes basically from three pieces. Uh, you've got the mobilization, that is, you know, they've got to get all the equipment to the site. They've got uh, testing and overhead. That's just a fixed cost for the project. Um, and you've got materials and installation time, which is proportional to the length. And you've got setup time at each pile. You've got to move the equipment. Um, and so if you can reduce the total number of piles, uh, and uh, then you're going to have a savings to your project. You can generate a, a graph like this. 
where you can look at the relationship between the pile capacity and the quantity of piles required. You can see that in this particular case, there's a significant drop uh, in the number of piles required if you chose a capacity of uh, 200 tons versus 190 tons. So not very much difference in the total length of, of each pile that's required, uh, but, the, but the total number is dramatically reduced, uh, therefore the cost is reduced.